how do we almost get a different face for Indiana Jones? And what happened to the creator's bizarre idea to combine Magnum P.I. with Quantum Leap? We're tracking down all the clues behind Magnum P.I.'s surprising history. Hollywood is full of instances of near misses when it comes to iconic roles. Tom Selleck discovered that he had been chosen to frontline a new movie by Steven Spielberg called Raiders of the Lost Ark in the role of an adventurous archaeologist named Indiana Jones. Unfortunately, the role came just as Selleck was starting work on Magnum P.I. after years of failed pilots. Selleck made the decision to stick with Magnum P.I. instead of going for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Harrison Ford was finalized for the role of Indy Jones instead, and the rest is cinematic history. One of the most iconic parts of Thomas Magnum's mythology was the red Ferrari he drove while chasing down suspects and or beautiful women. Just one problem, at 6 feet 4 inches tall, Selleck was too big to fit into a normal Ferrari. To get around this problem, Magnum's Ferrari had its padding removed so he would be placed lower on the seat. The seats were also bolted as far away from the steering wheel as possible to accommodate Selleck's long legs. Thanks to the popularity of the show, red Ferraris became a hot commodity on the buyer's market in the 80s and 90s. The MCU has popularized the concept of a shared cinematic universe around the world, but the concept of different movies and shows existing in the same universe and occasionally crossing over is not a new one. Television shows in particular are often willing to have crossover episodes between different properties belonging to the same studio. Besides using many of the same sets as the classic series Hawaii Five-0, Magnum P.I. had a couple more direct crossovers. The Season 7 episode, Novel Connection, featured Angela Lansbury's character from Murder, She Wrote, while the characters from Simon & Simon appeared in a Season 3 episode of Magnum P.I. Possibly the most bizarre crossover, though, was one that did not actually end up happening. There was a time when Magnum P.I. was primed to cross over with the acclaimed sci-fi action show Quantum Leap, both shows being created by TV legend Donald Belisario. The premise of Quantum Leap was that its lead character can leap into the bodies of different people using sci-fi tech and become those people for as long as needed to solve a case. In the early 1990s, Magnum P.I. had already ended. Tom Selleck had moved on to other roles. Quantum Leap was struggling to get picked up for a fifth season, but Lasario conceived of a way to keep the show going by replacing Selleck with Scott Bakula in a fresh series of Magnum P.I. adventures. Specifically, Belisario's idea was to have Bakula's lead character from Quantum Leap, Thomas Beckett, leap into the body of Thomas Magnum. Thus, Beckett would become the new Magnum and keep Quantum Leap running for a few more years. The idea did not go much further than some test footage being shot of Bakula wearing Magnum's iconic Hawaiian shirt. Instead, the fifth and final season of Quantum Leap had Beckett leaping into the body of Lee Harvey Oswald. Despite being a crime drama show, Magnum P.I. also featured plenty of comedic moments. Most such scenes took place between Thomas Magnum and the snooty British caretaker of the house he lived in, Higgins. Higgins was one of the few characters who could be reliably counted upon to cut the brash Magnum down to size with his dry wit time and again. The vast differences between the fastidious Higgins and the rambunctious Magnum was comedy gold. You're wonderful, Magnum. Well, I wouldn't say that. But maybe the funniest part is that actor John Hillerman, who played Higgins, wasn't British at all. He revealed that fans would write to him assuming he was British, and he would reply, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm a hick from Texas. Hillerman's British accent, which he had honed as a stage performer, was so good that even British fans believed him to be the real deal. Selleck told THR, I would go around London in a cab and they'd ask, where's the Brit, John Hillerman, from on your show? And I'd tell them he was from Denison, Texas. Despite solving so many mysteries across his show, the one mystery Thomas Magnum could never solve was the identity of his mysterious benefactor, Robin Masters, whom he never meets face to face. This led to a lively debate among fans as to the identity of Robin Masters. Many fans, and Magnum himself, believed Higgins had been Masters all along. But the voice of Robin Masters, as heard on the show, does not resemble Higgins' voice. In fact, the voice of Masters was provided by cinema legend Orson Welles, with Belisario revealing in an interview, Robin Masters was never Higgins. One of the most iconic parts of the mythology of Magnum P.I. was the special ring that Thomas Magnum and his allies T.C. and Rick wore. The ring was a memento from their time spent together during the Vietnam War. The two crosses at the center of the ring are a reference to the Cross of Lorraine, which is associated with Joan of Arc and which was once used by the Knights Templar. Like the true identity of Robin Masters, though, just what the ring signifies to Magnum and his friends remains a mystery. 
Magnum P.I. never tried to hide the fact that its charismatic and heroic lead was a Vietnam War veteran, and there's a good reason for this. Tom Selleck served in the military before becoming an actor, and he strongly disagreed with the negative portrayal of veterans in pop culture at the time. Donald Belisario, the creator of Magnum P.I., had also previously served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Together, Selleck and Belisario were determined to make Thomas Magnum into an example of a Vietnam War veteran character who was actually heroic instead of simply being damaged goods. Selleck told AARP, I don't want to get too emotional, but I am very proud of this. Magnum was recognized as the first show to portray Vietnam veterans in a positive way. When Magnum P.I. was first being developed, the plan was for the main character to be just like James Bond, a suave, hard-drinking, and womanizing man of action that men would want to be like. But this characterization did not sit well with Selleck, even though he was perfectly aware he could easily carry such a role based on his natural charisma. Belisario later revealed in an interview that Selleck told him, I just don't want to play what I look like, I really want to do something with humor. With that in mind, Thomas Magnum became a much more laid-back character, fighting crime in shorts and a Hawaiian shirt instead of a tuxedo. Selleck's instincts proved correct, and his take on Thomas Magnum became an iconic figure in pop culture in its own right, instead of being seen as a James Bond knockoff. By the time of the show's seventh season, Magnum P.I. was running out of steam. Thus, the decision was made to end the show after its seventh season, with the season finale, Limbo, serving as the end for the entire series. The episode sees Magnum caught in a shootout inside a warehouse. He gets mortally wounded and winds up in the hospital fighting for his life. After going into a coma, Magnum becomes conscious as a ghost-like figure. He spends the rest of the episode trying to keep his client safe from a group of killers and also saying goodbye to his old friends and allies before moving on to the afterlife. Although the episode appears to end with Magnum entering heaven, parts of the story were later re-edited to make Magnum's end less definitive after it transpired that the show had been picked up for one more season. Season 8 thus begins with Magnum waking up from his coma after his near-death experience and getting back to work. In the late 1980s, Tom Selleck did something shocking. He decided to walk away from Magnum P.I. while it was still bringing in solid ratings. Why? Selleck later told CBS that he wasn't sick of the character, he was just worn out from the unrelenting work schedule. I was tired from Magnum because I was doing 90-hour weeks for eight years. I wasn't tired of it. So it was time. What a nice way to go off. What a nice way to pay homage to the show. It was still so popular. I basically have Sundays off and I wake up maybe about 11 because I'm exhausted and then I eat, have some coffee and, and all of a sudden the day's almost gone. A big turning point was his smash 1987 hit film, Three Men and a Baby, which brought Selleck new opportunities in film, opportunities he wanted to explore. He told CBS, Magnum never was canceled. God knows how many episodes we could have done with the number one show on the air. Still, Selleck may be looking back slightly with rose-colored glasses. In fact, Magnum P.I. had slipped noticeably in the ratings by the end, with the final season finishing in 40th place for the 1987-1988 to TV year. I really loved the show and loved doing the character. I never got tired of it, but I did get tired from it. Magnum P.I. is today seen as a television classic, but even when it was on the air, Magnum P.I. frequently brought in big viewing numbers and had a host of distinguished fans. One such fan was Tom Clancy, author of such classics as The Hunt for Red October and the rest of the Jack Ryan series. Despite being mainly known for writing about serious men and women in uniform saving the day, it seems Clancy also had a soft spot for Thomas Magnum's more laid-back and breezy approach to fighting evil. Tom Selleck revealed that Clancy had expressed his love for Magnum P.I. to the actor, and even wanted to make a full-length movie about the character with Selleck in the lead. Selleck told Yahoo that it almost became a reality in the 90s. Tom Clancy is a huge Magnum fan. We got together, and I went to Universal, and I said, it's time we could do a series of feature films. They were very interested, and I had Tom, who wanted to do the story. Unfortunately, the studio's leadership was in a state of flux in the 90s, and the Magnum P.I. movie plans got lost in the constant reshuffling going on at the time. As late as 2009, Selleck was still willing to come back as Thomas Magnum for a movie that was in development at the time, but so far, nothing has yet come of it. If there is one thing the television industry hates, it's saying goodbye to a hit show. And television audiences never really said goodbye to Magnum P.I. After it ended, Selleck's show continued to find new audiences and fandoms during reruns. So naturally, CBS tried to cash in on the popularity of Magnum P.I. by rebooting the show for modern audiences. The new Magnum P.I. debuted in 2018, starring Jay Hernandez in the role of the new Thomas Magnum. 
While the show has seen moderate success, moving to NBC in 2023, fans have often wondered what Selleck thinks about the new Magnum and whether he would ever appear in the reboot. The answer is no. Selleck told TV Insider, They asked, and I said, absolutely not. Selleck said the main reason is that his current hit show, Blue Bloods, takes up all his time and attention. But he also admitted that the reality of the new show just couldn't live up to his expectations, or his own ideas for what a modern Thomas Magnum should be like. He told TV Insider, It will never be what in my fantasy world I would make it to be. Would you like to be the actor to play you? Play Magnum, I should say. Uh, me. 